All right, yet another, <laughs> another, uh, that's a whole, not just one lane closure, that is a whole side of the interstate closure there. Anybody there? Nobody there. Nobody at all. I think I solved the uh, rattling issue when I was doing some of these other videos. I was watching the playback on them and they're tick, 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 like super fast. I think I solved it. I think it was the uh, the phone holder thing that I was using. Um, so I put a couple of little, uh, little pieces of double-sided kind of foamy kind of tape in there to keep the phone from tapping way on its on the holder that it's in. So I think it's I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to listen to that one. Check out this car carrier ahead of me here. He's uh he's got like a land cruiser on that bottom rack but on the top rack in the very back he's got like a Rolls Royce or something up in there. Something some older car it looks like see they've got the soft top and it's got the the, uh, spare wheel thing in the back. Kind of cool. But to actually pull that older car up there on that top shelf like that, that's something. And he has the Land Cruiser on the bottom. That's interesting. I don't know. These car carrier uh, trailers, they are something else, man. I mean, what a... Uh, uh, interesting you know what a what an intricate piece of engineering and design these things are huh it's just you know whenever you go buy them they uh they just look very precarious the vehicles on them are just you know their 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 shocks are just bouncing around all over on their own tires and you know like they always look really precarious. I saw one a few days ago, and it was the it was the uh, last car on the top shelf, and he had the uh, the wheel plates extended all the way out to hold the rear wheels of this car up, and it was like bent down. It was actually like it had bouncing or been bouncing around so much that the driver's side rear wheel was actually the the. Uh, the, you know the track that it sits on was actually like bent down and almost almost bent down so far that it was on the hood of the car underneath it I was gonna, I was thinking about hopping on the CB to let the guy know but I had a feeling that he probably did know those guys work their butts off too I'll tell you those car carrier drivers you know like for for me the position that I have uh, doing these Amazon loads, um, you know, all I have to do is just, you know, back up, hook up the trailer, and haul it, and then unhook the trailer, uncouple it, you know, wherever I bring it to, and and I'm done. You know, I don't have to touch anything, I don't have to unload anything, nothing. But these car carrier guys, they are uh, they're responsible for for everything. You know, they're, they're they're actually the delivery guy themselves too. So when they show up, you know, to the destination where they're delivering a car, they actually, you know, have to climb up in there and unchain it and unstrap it. And, you know, they have the keys and they fire it up and, and, and uh, drive it out. And then once they do that, they have to readjust whatever cars, you know, that are left over in there properly so that their weight is, uh, you know, is balanced, you know, properly and all that stuff too. So. You know, it's not just like they just hook up to the thing and, and all of all of all cars to a destination. They have to do all that extra work. So, from what I understand, they get pretty, paid pretty well as a, as a uh, result of all that extra work. And then uh, you know, and then you got like the flatbed guys, and um, you know, they're they're not responsible for loading their trailers, but they're responsible for covering the freight, whatever it may be. You know, whatever their load is, they're responsible for covering it to keep it, um, uh, uh, you know, keep it 
safe from the elements, from the, from the outside elements, you know, and then they have to make sure that it's strapped down properly during their the transport, you know, so they have to, that's why you always see them pulled off, you know, you know, you know, readjusting straps and things like that, you know, and messing around. So they got a bit of, of work going on just besides driving also, you know, climbing up on the trailers, and, you know, balancing act up on top of them. And then, um, let's see, what else? What are the other ones that are kind of a bit of work? Then, and then like you got the reefers, the reefer trailers. And I guess in some cases, those guys, when they show up to the delivery, well, so, so when they pick up their trailer, whether it's loaded or unloaded, what have you, and they have this big refrigerated trailer. So they're responsible for keeping that trailer at a certain temperature during the entire haul. Uh, whatever the temperature is from the, you know, the, you know, from the people, the brokers or whatever who are, who are brokering the, the transport, you know, what, whatever temperature, whether it's frozen goods or if it just needs to be refrigerated, what have you, the driver's responsible for ensuring that the temperature remains that, that, that consistent temperature for the entirety of the haul. So, and then they, you know, they have to fuel the, uh, the reefer uh, diesel engine, you know, that, that refrigerates everything. And then I guess in some cases when they arrive to their destinations, there there's a couple options. Um, they have one thing, it's called a lumper service, where uh, there's workers at the dock when you get there who will unload the contents of your trailer for a fee. And from what I understand, sometimes it can be pretty, uh, sometimes it ain't cheap. You know, up in the, you know, 200 bucks and you're thinking, man, for like 30 minutes or, you know, an hour of unloading, you know, you know, pallets from a trailer, it's like, these guys get paid crazy. Those drivers ain't getting paid that well, I know that. Um, so that's option one is pay a lumper service or option two, I guess. And sometimes it may not even be an option uh, that, you know, they can hop back there and grab a forklift or a, uh, you know, a pallet, a pallet lift or whatever, pallet jack, and unload it themselves, you know, so, I'm talking about more than just driving and a lot of these, a lot of these driver jobs, you know, I'm fortunate in the fact that all the freight that I uh, haul is what is considered no-touch freight, and that's good because my body is not as young as it used to be, you know, I had back surgery a year ago, coming up on a year ago, and so i just not as, uh, I, I can't articulate my body as well as I used to. Anyhow, so there was uh, another interstate <laughs> road closure, speed reduction, no worky, no touchy. <laughs>